everybody. Good to see you all. Our scripture for the message today is in Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 16. This is a story probably familiar to you all. And the Bible says there, He spake, that is Jesus, a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Let's pray. Father, again, we're thankful for your word and for this part that we've read, which is ask, Lord, your blessings upon us as we hear uh, these words and uh, this message. We pray that you give us an open heart and mind to absorb those things that you have for us. In the name of Christ, amen. Now, at the beginning of chapter 12, Jesus is teaching, uh, and he tells his disciples that they need to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which, of course, is uh, hypocrisy. Uh, they were one thing on the outside to everybody that could see them, but they were different on the inside. And so he was doing that teaching, and then he uh, uh, taught about uh, not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. He talked about not denying him, but confessing him as your Savior before the world. And uh, all of a sudden, while he's doing all this teaching, somebody pops up out of the crowd, and he said, Master... Tell my brother that he share the inheritance with me. So he's got his mind on money. He's got his mind on the things of the world. And regardless of what Jesus is teaching, he wants Jesus to help him get his hands on half of the inheritance that his brother uh, has inherited. And uh, Jesus said, well, who made me a judge over uh, those things and he said that we should take heed and beware of covetousness and for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things that he possesses and you know we have a real problem with that in our world we think people are worth more to us if they've got a lot. And we look around at, uh, at people and we judge people uh, by what it is that they have accumulated in life. And we don't realize that anything any of us accumulates uh, is soon going to be gone. I mean, it's fleeted, you know. And uh, so Jesus, because of this man that stood up and wanted uh, the inheritance, uh, told a story, a parable, 
which is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning uh, and about uh, a rich fool. And uh, says he spake a parable unto them, saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. I mean, he had a good year. Uh, his corn crop or his wheat crop or whatever it was that he raised was just the best that he had ever had. Well, the man was already rich, the Bible tells us. So, uh, you know, it was just adding to the riches that he had. And he could have done so much good in the world with what God had already given him. And uh, But there's no thought in any of the things that he said about trying to share it, maybe. Um, uh, giving any the charity of any kind. And what he wanted to do was just build bigger barns and store it all up for himself and sit back and take it easy, okay? And and ride on the prosperity uh, of the past. And uh, he said, I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Now, the Bible tells us the, here that uh, in so many words that this man was a man that was lost. He had never been saved. And you can't expect uh, a lost man to live according to the Bible, can you? He's not going to do it. <laughs> Just ain't going to do it at all. And uh, But I want us to look today at something that's a very serious matter, and that is the high cost of being lost. Okay, the high cost of being lost. Uh, now, I know that this is a subject that people don't like to talk about a whole lot. They don't like to talk about lost. And they don't like to talk about hell. They'd rather talk about heaven. They'd rather talk about the joys of the Christian life. And uh, But, uh, you know, there's got to be some way. If we're not going to go to hell, there's got to be some way that we're going to escape it. And God's made a way for us to do that. And the truth, the whole truth, demands balance. We have to tell you about what God's judgment is going to be like if you're lost and what God's blessings are going to be for you if you're saved. Uh, that gives you the whole truth. And we must face the cost if we're lost. And we must warn the lost, those of us who are saved, how they can escape hell. Now, this is a sad parable that Jesus is calling because it ends with a man losing his life. But not only losing his life, but he lost everything that he had, uh, even to his soul. And he's, it, it, it seems like he's, his life has been very prosperous, but he ends up being a very pitiful person. When it comes down to the end, he is rich, but his end is nothing but regret in the way that he has lived. And I, we want to look at why the rich man here, the one that God causes a fool, how, why he lost it all. Well, he, he lost it all uh, in one sense because he had turned his back on God. And, it, and he had not given himself to the Lord. Well, one thing is that his happiness in this life that he's living was based on what happened around him, what his circumstances were. And when we see the first part of this parable, we find out that this man's circumstances were very good. Okay, I mean he was a he was a big farmer, a rich farmer, and he had a bumper crop come in at harvest time, and he had so much more than he ever dreamed that he was going to have. 
if he'd have dreamed he was going to be that that big, he would have already had them bigger barns built. But he didn't know that. And now what he says he's going to do is build bigger barns in order to take in uh, the the great harvest that the Lord has given him. And by the way, he never mentions that the Lord has given him this great harvest. You know, everything that any of us have is what the Lord has given us, that what he has put into our care to use. And uh, so we can't brag about having anything uh, of our own. But if you look at the scripture, it says the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and things changed immediately. Uh, everything seemed to be going so well for him in his life and success in farming was the thing that had made him so happy about this bumper crop. Well, the bumper crop is something that now is in the past. He's got it stored in his mind, or he, at least in his mind, he's got it stored in those new barns that he's going to build, and everything's all right. And, you know, one of the things I thought about is you can't change the past, okay? The past is what it is, and you cannot change it. You may go back and try to make up for some of the things you did wrong, but you're not going to change the past. But what can change is the present and the future. They can both change, and it depends on your attitude toward the future and the present. What are you going to do with your life? Now, whenever you go to make investments, they're always risky especially if you go out there and plant it in the ground. Okay, you got to have the right amount of sunshine. You got to have the right amount of moisture. And uh, you got to tend to it. Uh, and, and you'll get a good crop if you get those things. But I was listening at the newscast uh, a little while ago, uh, probably a month or so ago, and they were talking about how it was with farmers in North Carolina. And you know that the farmers lost 50% of the corn crop in the state, statewide. 50% of the corn crop this year because of drought. They didn't get the moisture they needed. They got plenty of sunshine. In fact, they got too much sunshine. Uh, but... You know, imagine what that does to you and all the investment you've got in the planning. And it's a good thing that a lot of them had some insurance on that corn crop that would help them out. But uh, things can change, and they can change pretty instantly sometimes. And financial reserve uh, reverses would have done... Uh, bad things to this man and a drought would like we've had in, in North Carolina would have devastated him because he would have thought himself a bad farmer too much rain would have ruined him and uh, he goes but the whole problem with him is that he didn't have any inner peace okay he didn't have the peace of God which passes all understanding uh, and he didn't have that in his heart because he's the kind of person that thought about things all the time. Just things. Things that he wanted, things that he desired. And that's all he thought about in life. So he had no inner peace. And I tell you, only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is going to equip us for tough times ahead. We need to remember that. Only faith in Christ will help you do that. His holdings, the things he had gathered up, were limited to earthly things. When the Bible plainly tells us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven and not on the earth. So, 
this rich man that's got his bumper crop and he says, what shall I do? I ain't got room for all this. You know, and uh, his prosperity produced some problems. He was going to have to build bigger barns or else he didn't know what to do with all the success that he had had. His increase in wealth complicated his life. That's one thing I don't have to worry about. My increase in wealth and got to got me too complicated so far. I understand what's going on, you know. But uh, this man had problems with all this that he had, and he gave no thought, as I said, to sharing some of it with somebody else that may be in need. Uh, and so this rich fool suffered from eye trouble. Listen to him. He said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build new barns. I will do that. Okay. And he said, I will build greater, and there will I bestow all my, he's got a my problem too, uh, fruits and my goods, he says. And, you know, and then my new barns, big, beautiful barns that I've got full of all of my stuff that I've harvested are going to stand out here and everybody can see them and see how successful I am, you know. You know, a lot of people like to call attention to how successful they are. Uh, and they look, at, they say in their heart, look at me, look what I've done. Well, you haven't done anything that God didn't allow you to do. Okay? And I wouldn't be claiming that if I was him when God is the one that made the wheat grow and he's, he was completely in control of that farmer's uh, crop. Because he sends the rain and he sends the sunshine. And so this farmer did not realize everything that he harvested was perishable. Did you know that the Bible says that if we will have belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will not perish, but have eternal life. The only thing that is going to last forever is that which is in the hands of the Lord. That includes me and you. But this man had his hopes on everything that was earthly. That's all. He was called a rich fool by God himself. But he thought he had all of his ducks in a row. You know, he said, so take it easy. Lay back. Eat, drink, and be merry. You made it to the top. But his plan for the future was faulty. He had planned on taking it easy. He was going into early retirement. Okay? And he was planning on taking it easy and having plenty to eat and plenty of entertainment that he liked, but he neglected to plan for eternity because he had plenty of time. That's what he thought. See, one of the greatest tricks that the devil has 
is to suggest to you that you have plenty of time. But the devil doesn't know how much time you have. You might have a day, you might have 60 years. You don't know. That night, the Lord spoke to that man and said to him, Thou fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who's going to have control of all that that you have? You can't take it with you. You've heard that before, haven't you? You can't take it with you. Others are going to uh, own what he had. And he thought it was his. He would lose everything, including his soul. There are many people today even that are like this rich man that the Lord is talking about. They invest their lives in temporary trinkets of the world. They could come to the Lord and have the promise of eternal treasures in heaven. Real riches that are laid up in heaven in our name by those who trust in Jesus. That's why Jesus added this last word, sentence in verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and not as rich and is not rich toward God. That's something in it. The Lord is just plainly telling us, just like it is, that either we're going to invest in our treasures in heaven, or we're going to invest them in this world. If they're worldly, they're going to perish. If they're heavenly treasures, they're going to last forever. Tell you the truth, when this rich, rich fool had to leave behind everything he had, I mean, after he had gone and built those barns or was planning to build those barns, he had to leave it. I don't know how big his bumper crop was, but he had to leave it. And he had to leave it a lot sooner than he thought. Here's two things that we think. We think that we are not rich. But we are richer than most people on this earth. If we have Jesus Christ in our heart, we are richer than most people on this earth. Well, we are rich because we have the promise that's laid up in heaven for us. If somebody asked us how rich we are, you'd say not, not much. Not much. And we think we'd, we're not very rich. But I'm going to tell you something. If you've got your health, you're rich. Okay? That's one, one of the riches God's blessed us with. This help. And I know some here 
that haven't been healthy in a while. I'm one of them. I'm not real healthy, but I'm pretty good. You know, I'm doing pretty good. But uh, we are rich if we have enough health that we can get to church because there's so many that can't. And so that's part of the riches that we have. The other thing that people think is that even though I feel good, I don't think I'm going to die today. You know what? I just don't believe I am. But we don't know that. There's somebody bigger than you and me that's in control of that. And so here's what this rich farmer should have done. Okay, I'm really good at telling people what they should have done. Okay. This rich farmer should have accepted everything that he has as what the Lord gave him to be a steward of. That's what we ought to do. If we don't have much or if we have a lot, we're a steward of whatever we got. That's a good poem, ain't it? Somebody wrote this little poem one time, and I forgot it. (laughs) It matters not how much you got. It matters how you use what you have. A lot. That ain't exactly how that poem goes, but I got it. (laughs) But uh, anyway. uh, But this rich man should have done that. He should have recognized God and all of his blessings. Folks, we're blessed. And we should recognize God for what he's done in our life. And then we should be good stewards of it. I keep thinking back to 2018 when we were doing the no matter what. And one of the things that we said no matter what we were going to do, we were going to tithe our income to the Lord. No matter what. And I I guess everybody's been doing that. Sure looks like it anyway. But he should have made he should have made some preparation for his future, for his eternity. That's what all of us ought to do. We ought to think about where we're going when we leave here, because we are going to leave here. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for your word and, uh, Lord, how it points uh, our souls and our lives toward heaven. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd help us to uh, read your word, study your word, so that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we can take advantage of your promise and end up in heaven. And, and Father, we pray that you'd bless us while we're here to serve you and do those things that are uh, pleasing in your sight. If there's one in here, Lord, today that doesn't know you as their Savior, we pray, Lord, that they would choose you and choose you now in the name of Christ. Amen.